Well everyone, it's time for us to go ahead and take a look and compare the M2 Mac Mini and the M2 MacBook Air and see which specific Mac you should go ahead and buy. Now I will tell you these are two different beasts, but I will be completely honest, I've been in, at least in my early days of buying a Mac, I was kind of contemplating these two devices for the most part. I ended up going for a MacBook Pro, but I definitely do think these two Macs are a lot more similar than you can probably imagine. Now, one is a dedicated like desktop experience, like well, you can't take the Mac Mini anywhere, it's pretty much portable, and you can obviously you know take it with you other places, but it is not really a portable device, it's not meant to be, you can't you know mess with it when you're in the, on a road trip or something. But on a MacBook Air, you do have that ability of actually kind of using it portably, which is really cool, but it is, you know, kind of substantially cheaper for the base MacBook Air than the base Mac Mini. So I will go ahead and leave some links in the description if you want to buy these, you know, Macs on Amazon. You can get them from there and you can help support the channel at the same time. Now, starting off with the price tags, for the base Mac Mini, this Mac is costing $599. Now for the base MacBook Air M2 model, it is costing $1,199. But there is a pretty big difference here, and the reason I'm comparing the base models is because with the Mac Mini, you can spec it out much, much higher, and you can get that thing to you know cost way you know, cost way more money. With the M2 MacBook Air, you do have the ability of specking it out higher, but for the most part, the base model and the higher end model, you are just kind of changing out the RAM and the memory and the storage and whatnot. So with the base MacBook Air, you are basically getting an eight gigabyte you know, machine with the RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. Now with the Mac mini, you're kind of getting the same configuration. You're getting eight gigs of RAM and you're getting 256 gigabytes of storage for that base model. So that is a very interesting situation to be in because for those base models, you're kind of getting the same exact machine. But however, you have to keep in mind that the MacBook Air is a laptop. It is, you know, configured to be pretty much the same exact kind of thing, I guess, as a almost like a desktop you would get. But a big thing to keep in mind is you are lacking two extra core GPU if you're getting that base Mac MacBook Air. So with the Mac Mini, you're getting eight core CPU and ten core GPU. With the MacBook Air, you are getting eight core CPU and eight core GPU. Now I don't want to just bore you with numbers, and honestly, it's really not that big of a deal. Both of these machines would be way more powerful than anything I would ever do. I would even consider myself like kind of like a medium user i play a lot of games sometimes and that's kind of it but if you're somebody who like really needs the most amount of power i think an m1 macbook air might be perfect enough for you to be honest however one thing that kind of bothers me sometimes with having like a macbook pro or macbook air are the port selection now i think apple's done a great job with the m1 pro and m2 pro macbooks the fact that we actually have an sd card slot and hdmi port is really cool with these two devices they are vastly different in their port selection so with the macbook air we are pretty much getting only two thunderbolt usb-c ports basically so they're thunderbolt 4 ports which is great however you do have the extra MagSafe charger as well so you can always go ahead and you know charge your macbook via that MagSafe charger and you do have two extra usb ports which is kind of nice for a portable laptop like that now with the mac mini side you are getting substantially more ports so you are getting two thunderbolt 4 ports if you have the m2 model but if you do spec it out to the m2 pro model which costs more money you can get four thunderbolt 4 ports which is actually a lot of ports to be honest you're getting two usb a ports so those older type of you know standard ports you're getting that type of capability you're getting a, an hdmi port and you're getting that ethernet port as well so from the io standpoint from the input output you are getting a lot more ports on that Mac Mini than on the MacBook Air. Would that be a reason I would go and upgrade from a MacBook Air to a Mac Mini or vice versa? Probably not, to be honest, because I can pretty much do everything with a dongle. That's kind of how I've been doing it for a while. And if you're connecting it to a Thunderbolt 4 monitor or a Thunderbolt 3 monitor, you can honestly just plug your dongles into the monitor itself if it has extra ports, and you can just plug in your SD card and extra storage or whatever through the monitor instead of even using ports of your Mac and at all. So that's kind of one thing to keep in mind, but that's really the main difference on the outside besides the actual look of these devices. So if we're looking, taking a look at like what's similar between them, probably the big thing there. Now, in terms of how far you can kind of spec these machines out, you can get, if we're talking about the most powerful MacBook Air and the most powerful Mac Mini after specking them out, you are getting a more powerful Mac Mini than a MacBook Air. So the MacBook Air doesn't have the M2 Pro chip inside. So it has the standard M2 chip, which you can, I don't think you, you can spec it out to get that 10 core GPU option, very similar to the base model Mac Mini. But with the Mac Mini, you are able to spec it out with that M2 Pro chip. So here's the differences. 
With the MacBook Air, you can get an 8-core CPU. On the Mac Mini, you can get a 12-core CPU. So that is already kind of a decent difference. Now with the MacBook Air, you are getting up to 10 cores GPU. With the Mac Mini, again, if you spec it out for more money, you can get up to 19 core GPU. So that is a pretty big difference there, but I don't think that would be enough of a difference for me to go and upgrade from like portable MacBook Air to a you know desktop Mac Mini, in my opinion. I value portability a lot. The RAM is also, I mean, you're going from up to 24 gigs of a MacBook Air to 32 gigabytes on the, you know, Mac Mini. And then the big one is probably storage that you can spec out, but you could probably always, you know, get another SSD on the side, up to two terabytes on the MacBook Air and up to eight terabytes on the M2 Mac Mini. So I think those things in and of itself are really big things to keep in mind because you can spec out both to be very, very powerful and both are going to be very powerful machines. You know, I don't want to just sit here and just say, oh, like one is going to be substantially faster so pick that one up there's a lot more that goes into these things than just you know which one is the more powerful one i definitely do think a better value per dollar could potentially be a mac mini if you already own things like a screen or the accessories and whatnot but the reason why i really do like macbooks and especially this macbook air is because for one you have the ability of using it in portable mode. So if you want to go ahead and go on a road trip or you want to go to a coffee shop or whatever, well, you can go ahead and still have a very, very powerful machine on, you know, on the tip of your hands and you can go ahead and be pretty much anywhere with it. But you can also dock it up to a monitor and pretty much use it like a Mac mini and feel no different at all about it. And then if you want, you can go and take it with you somewhere else. And that is a really nice thing to have. That is exactly what I do. I didn't have a Mac mini before, but I used an iMac and a MacBook Pro combo. So I would use MacBook Pro when I need a portable and I use the iMac when I'm at home. And I like that experience, but I definitely do like the experience I have now. But I definitely do like the experience that I have now of being able to plug in my Mac and pretty much move on from there. So I definitely do think that is a very, very important thing to keep in mind. So again, it's not a deal breaker, but I definitely do like having a portable machine. But I also do like having the ability, you know, I'm going to be honest, of having a lot more ports to choose from natively on my Mac. There are a lot of times, sometimes the dongles don't work out properly and whatnot. So having a Mac that's just dedicated all the time to be at home, you can get, I feel like it's just a kind of like a faster machine just because of the capability behind it, just, just from that standpoint alone. Now, on top of that, without the MacBook Air, like you're paying for the you know, display, you're paying for the extra battery life you're paying for a lot of stuff like that and having like a macbook air that does charge while you're going through and getting power like that again if you're in a situation where the power cuts out of your house i've been in this situation a lot because I, I don't know why i keep short circuiting my room but essentially your work is still saved it's not going anywhere if you're playing a game and if you're doing whatever you know as long as you didn't like randomly short circuit your macbook you should be good to go with a mac mini a lot of the times everything's usually saved you know your work is automatically saved and everything will boot up usually like it should but you do have a little bit more leeway i guess if you're in a situation like that with the macbook air because it does have a battery so to kind of sum up this video i will definitely tell you there's not a clear answer i would say if you're not planning on buying a screen like if you're planning on buying a macbook and you don't plan on buying a display or any other accessories it may actually be cheaper to buy a macbook air because with a mac mini you're going to have to buy a display and you're going to have to buy your magic keyboard and magic mouse with the macbook air it's kind of already included although it's a smaller display and it's like it's not an ideal situation but if you plan on using it like a laptop all the time then it's not a big deal with the m2 mac mini the base model it is substantially cheaper but you do have to pay for the extra monitor and the accessories and whatnot so that's kind of one thing to keep in mind i don't really think there's a wrong answer here but I probably would say if you have the money, go and spec it, whatever machine you get, just spec it out as high as you can and pretty much try to keep it for like five or six years. So that pretty much covers it up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would be so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, so then.